before Rainbow Six turned into a multiplayer shooter where you fight people turned into zombies by an alien parasite, it actually used to be one of the most grounded first-person shooter series. When the first entry about the multinational counter-terrorist unit Rainbow was released on the PC in 1998, it was all about planning and a slow tactical approach in order to free hostages, defuse bombs, and fight terrorists. The game had been ported onto multiple platforms, and even received an, albeit suboptimal, version on the Game Boy Color. Its sequel, Rogue Spear, built upon a strong foundation and nearly perfected the formula set by its predecessor, and reception was really positive at the time. Up to including Rainbow Six 3, the series was something really special, and sadly nothing like it can be found nowadays, at least that I'm aware of. But did you know that three years after its original release, Rogue Spear received a version on the Game Boy Advance? And this is what today's episode of Advanced Oddities will be about. To my surprise, and despite what you may expect by merely looking at it, this is actually quite a good game. Like the Game Boy Color version of the original Rainbow Six, the view of Rogue Spear on the GBA has been moved to a top-down perspective. The gameplay still revolves around fighting terrorists and freeing hostages, and it's still as slow and methodical as on PC. However, as you probably figured, there are some massive differences in terms of game design. Instead of commanding multiple teams of up to 8 operatives in total, planning detailed routes and giving orders to strike from multiple directions at the same time, you only command one team comprised of 4 operatives. The whole planning aspect has been stripped down to only selecting your team members and what uniform they should wear. During a mission, you have to slowly move across the level and take down enemies by using each of your squad members' equipment and abilities. Because if you don't, your team will die faster than you can say man down, man down. And I can say one thing. Just like the original, Rogue Spear on the Game Boy Advance is tough as nails. Just running into rooms or an open field while shooting aimlessly will definitely end in your squad's demise, as they can't take many hits before they die. No, this game is all about tactics. For example, recon team members come equipped with heartbeat sensors that allow you to spot nearby enemies on your map. Those can then be picked off by your sniper, if there are no obstructions in the way. You have to be aware of your surroundings. And my number one rule is always expect there to be enemy snipers. Crouching behind crates, slowly strafing around corners and catching enemies off guard. That is the way to success. Oh, and always check your ammo, because there is no automatic reloading once your magazine is empty. The characters you can choose from the roster have varied abilities and gear. They are mainly split into four categories. Assault, Recon, Sniper and Demolition. And each has its own advantages and disadvantages and should be used depending on the situation. If one of your characters dies in the field, they're gone for good. Unless you were only picking the faceless recruits, which is what I usually do. Because seeing the word dead pop up in my roster makes me feel bad. Your AI buddies are mostly competent but sometimes they just stand around while you are being killed. And there is the occasional pathfinding issue. Overall though, I'd say they are helpful, beyond them functioning as your extra lives. Strangely enough, unlike on PC, there are no female agents to choose from. I suppose this might be connected to the developers only having enough space for male voice samples. Got him. Speaking of Go. voice samples, there is actually very little sound in the game overall. Background music only exists in the menus.
during a mission, all you get is ambient noise, like a howling wind. Sound the alarm! And the sound of your footsteps, the occasional voiceover line by a squad mate, John Clark, a terrorist, or a hostage. And of course, there are also gunfire and explosions. The story differs from the PC version, as the game is set one year after the events of the original Rogue Spear. And the storytelling has received a huge cut as well, as now, instead of getting intel from different characters, being able to read news articles about your success on previous missions, and seeing info about different people, groups and organizations, you only get to read a mission summary, and what Rainbow Six himself, aka John Clark, has to say. You won't find character bios of your team members either. But to be fair, the story has always been rather negligible in Rainbow Six games. The missions themselves and the gameplay have always been in the foreground. In terms of content, the campaign consists of 15 missions and you can choose between three difficulty levels. Once you manage to eliminate every terrorist in a mission, you'll be able to replay it in lone wolf mode, meaning you only get to play as one operative without backup, which makes the game even harder than it already is. And honestly, I have no clue if you can even beat every mission with just one guy in your team. Apart from that, there is a multiplayer mode, which I unfortunately can't say anything about because I've never had the pleasure of playing this game with a friend. And that's it. No training missions or anything else. So the content is a bit sparse. But I find that the missions are fun to replay anyway. Because they're challenging and you can try out different tactics and see how those work out. There are a couple of missions that are quite similar to the PC original. Like the very first one. Flying Gate resembles the mission Pandora Trigger almost to a T. But mostly, the missions are completely new. One mission type they really should not have bothered with though. Stealth missions. Mission Just like in the PC version, they are the worst. You are not allowed to shoot anyone, and when you are spotted, it's game over. Zero checkpoints. And the levels tend to be quite long, with multiple objectives. So imagine you succeed at sneaking past tons of guards for minutes on end, complete three out of four objectives, only to then be spotted by that one idiot guard you didn't see, and then you have to start all over again. That is frustrating to say the least. Remember. All in all, there are three missions like that, and one of them requires you to disarm a bunch of bombs without being detected first, and then rescue hostages right afterwards. Which is just crazy! For those, I recommend looking up guides or using safe states in case you are not playing on the original hardware. Actually, while we're at it, let's talk about some of the negatives. Let's start off with the obvious one, the visuals. I don't want to be too hard on the graphics, because if you actually get to play it on a small screen, the game definitely looks better, but if you were to tell me that this is a Nokia game from the mid-2000s, I would believe you. I mean, the animations are alright, and there is enough visual variety between the levels, but it all feels rather... still. They could have added something like water animations and maybe some weather effects, stuff like that to make the scenery feel more alive, but mm, let's just say the graphics are adequate and fulfill their purpose. The controls fulfill their purpose as well. It's just a shame that you can't look them up anywhere in the game. These are probably the most complicated controls I've ever seen in a Game Boy game. Don't believe me? Okay, well, walking with the d-pad, shooting with the b-button, reloading with a, what's sitting still, Strafing with L, opening the map with select, pausing with start, those all make sense, but... Performing an action like opening a door or saving a hostage, L plus B, while standing still, crouching, L plus A, ordering your team to wait or to follow you, press L twice, changing weapons, R plus A, precise aiming, R plus B, ordering a single team member to wait or to follow you, press R twice, and finally, switching between team members, L plus R plus B. Huh. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but this game direly, direly, direly needed a tutorial mode. Or at least a screen where the controls are displayed. I bought this game used on eBay around 2007 without a package or manual, and luckily whoever sold it to me was kind enough to print out the controls onto a piece of paper. The different button combinations are time consuming, so it's almost impossible to quickly change between flash grenades and your primary weapon fast enough. Also, to get a hostage to follow you, or to tell them they're safe, you have to press L and B, all while standing still. 
If you press L while moving slightly, you enter strafing mode. And when you press B while doing that... Yep! This literally happened to me on multiple occasions. And speaking of hostages, you can only escort one hostage per team member. So you have to switch between operatives if you want to escort multiple people at the same time. This gets tedious when your squad is currently split up or you only have one member available. Also, it's not enough to just bring them to the extraction zone, but you actually have to interact with them again to tell them they're safe. What's also not helping, in the character selection screen, you can't see which item does what. There's no item name, no description, no nothing. Again, this could have been solved by a tutorial. As an example, this is a heartbeat sensor, which allows you to see nearby enemies on your map. Try to figure that out on your own if you don't have a manual, or you never played a Rainbow Six game before. Circling back to something I've mentioned earlier, there are no checkpoints in this game, and the missions can take around 10 minutes to complete. So the frustration factor when you accidentally shoot a hostage in the face, where you were just trying to get them to follow you, can be extremely frustrating. And so is being randomly killed by an enemy sniper. But I have to say, this lack of checkpoints and player friendliness is kinda intriguing. It makes progressing through each stage so much tenser and adds a level of realism and excitement to playing. And that brings me to my verdict. Rogue Spear on the GBA is not a game for everybody. It requires a lot of patience, as the gameplay is slow and methodical, and can be very frustrating at times. But in this regard, it actually perfectly manages to capture the essence of its PC counterpart. If you like tactical action games and have a high tolerance for difficulty, I definitely recommend checking this game out. It's a special one, and I've honestly never seen anything quite like it before. Not only is this a Rainbow Six game on the Game Boy Advance, but it's also a very unique interpretation of the source material that simultaneously does its own thing and also happens to work. This game is truly an oddity, an advanced oddity, and a small hidden gem, if I dare say so. Thanks for watching.